Hello, everybody. This is episode three of Market News with Rodney Lake. On this episode, we're going to cover the Fed just briefly, but we're going to spend most of our time on the GW Investment Institute Investment Framework Business Management Price Valuation and Balance Sheet BMPB. Here we go. Thank you for joining Market News with Rodney Lake. This is a regular show of the GW Investment Institute where we discuss timely market topics. I'm Rodney Lake. I serve as Vice Dean for Undergraduate Programs at George Washington University School of Business. I'm also a teaching instructor of finance and the director of the GW Investment Institute. The GW Investment Institute teaches students at GW how to think about investing and how to invest. Undergraduate and graduate students learn by doing. They serve as analysts and portfolio managers, managing approximately $8 million in university endowment funds across four student investment funds covering equities, real estate, and quantitative investing. We also teach a class on venture capital. The GW Investment Institute shares market insights and research and links students to industry and industry professionals. As a disclaimer, this program and its content contain general information and are intended for discussion purposes only. The GW Investment Institute is not, by means of this program or its content, rendering accounting, business, financial investment, legal, tax, or other professional advice. This program and its content are not a substitute for such professional advice or services. Before making any decision or taking any action that may affect your business or investments, you should consult a qualified professional advisor. The GW Investment Institute shall not be responsible for any loss sustained by any person who relies on this program or its contents. Welcome everyone. This is Market News with Rodney Lake. I'm your host, Rodney Lake, and welcome back. We took the summer off. The academic year is now starting, and we're already off. Uh, fourth week of classes that are complete, at least for me. There's a couple more classes tomorrow. For everybody else, week five starts on Monday. Super exciting time. A lot of buzz on campus. People are excited to be back. We're in person. Many things are happening. So that's so exciting. We're happy to see everybody, and it's time to get to work, of course. So Episode three here today, it's agenda. Number one uh, is that we're going to talk a little bit of market news, uh, what the Fed is doing, especially because the last time we talked, Fed were raising rates. Now we're raising rates. So just mention that. And then the second part here, we're just going to spend time talking about the GW Investment Institute investment framework. So that's business, management, price valuation, and balance sheet. BMPB is what we say. And we're going to talk about it broadly. And we'll do a couple more episodes where we're going to talk about each of the individual pieces, give you a basic highlight of how we evaluate companies here at the GW Investment Institute. And hopefully it's instructive for you. Uh, Remember, this is not advice. uh, So let's just jump in. So what's happening with the Fed? So last year, as you can all remember, or 2020, even let's rewind two years, the Fed were lowering rates. And so in March 16 of 2020, uh, they decreased rates down to, you know, zero to 25 basis points. Uh, they decreased by 100 basis points, 100 basis points to get to that range. Since March 17 of this year, 2022, they have been raising rates, 25, 50, 75, 75, and March, uh, September 22, uh, 75. So we're now at a 300 to 325 basis points range. So that is a big increase in a fairly short period of time. So But uh, Powell is also saying that he's going to do what it will take to tame inflation, which in the long term is very likely good for all of us. There's going to be short term pain here uh, now, uh, but the exchange will be asset prices will will, be consistent and people will not lose money over the long term. Inflation is a destruction of wealth over the long term. So uh, short term pain, long term gain. Hopefully that's the case. Uh, It seems like we're trending that way. Uh, The market uh, is all over the place, but mostly down right now. And so the the stock market. So we'll bring more market news. uh, But this episode, what I really wanted to focus in on is we start this academic year. And again, we just completed week four. We're heading into week five. I want to talk about the GW Investment Institute investment framework. So we break things down and we talk about the business. We talk about the management. We talk about the price versus the valuation. And we talk about the balance sheet. Now, this framework, some of you, uh, it may be familiar if you're following the Investment Institute. But if you're also following Mr. Buffett, we took a, a, a bunch of pieces from him and we added uh, the balance sheet to make sure that we're evaluating very consistently what we think the risk of the, of the balance sheet actually is. So step one. 
we look at the business. And again, we're going to have follow-up episodes to do a bit of a deep dive on each one of these components. So today, it's just going to be an overview of the, the entire framework. I'll say a little bit about each one of the components, but we're going to do another episode about each one of them, so we'll spend more time on the individual components moving forward. So number one, the business. So we want to invest in good businesses. Really, we want to invest in great businesses. We want great businesses at fair prices. We'll get the valuation. But how do you understand if a business is a good business? How do you understand if a business has a good business model? Well, we want metrics. How can we find indicators that would lead us to think that this is a good business? One obvious one for many of you and, and for us too is the profit margin. Let's look at the profit margin. So if you think about a really great business or great business model, you might think software companies as an example. They tend to have higher than average profit margins because the way that they produce products, right? You produce the next uh, version of a piece of software, really the, all the value and, and the cost of developing it is at the beginning. Making a copy of that's very cheap and then selling that, especially if you're selling it software as a service. So that is a great business model, selling software as a service. That's very likely if you do it properly over time and your software is useful and, and people demand it, that you're going to have high profit margins for that business. And so we're looking for businesses that have good business models, that have high profit margins as indicators of being a good business. So we want to be on the, the outlook for those things. Next, uh, we want to make sure that we're partnered with fantastic management. So we want to partner with people who have integrity, energy, and intelligence. Uh, that's Buffett says that, and that's what we want. We want them aligned with us. We're shareholders. In the case of the, the student funds at the GW Investment Institute, we're not you know, getting calls with management, and they really can't tell us too much more than they can tell anyone else because of Reg FD, fair disclosure. So we have to get our information from what is published, what they're saying uh, within their MDNA, Management Discussion Analysis, in the 10K, also what they say in their earnings releases, maybe they give investor presentations. So we have to glean all of our information from those pieces. So what does that tell us? Well, it can tell us a lot about how they manage the company, how they think about allocating capital, and that's one of the things I want to key on. We want to make sure that we have a good understanding of how this management team is allocating capital. And we'll, we'll get into that again in another episode specifically, but we want to make sure they're aligned. We're, we want to make sure they're investing the capital that's the owner's capital of the firm on everyone's behalf in the most efficient way. Next up, price versus valuation. If it's a good company, it's very unlikely that it's going to be super cheap unless there's something really specifically wrong in the short term. But good companies, most people know about. If it's a great company, Apple, for example, it's our largest holding in the, at the GW Investment Institute, people know that it's a good business. So how do we decide whether we should be investing or whether we should not be investing? We have to figure that out. We have to figure out how uh, you know we make sense of all this. Now, one is, okay, price earnings ratio can be a metric that we use uh, in the short term to figure out, okay, is this a good business uh, at this price or is this a bad business at this price? But remember, on the business side, we're looking for great businesses and we're looking for prices that are fair. So we're not going to get a deal. We're not probably not going to buy Apple uh, at a deal unless it's back you know, before uh, Tim Cook took over and there was a lot of problems. Maybe when Steve Jobs first came back, okay, well, that's a long time ago, maybe 2005 as an example. So that's when we're possibly going to get a deal on Apple. Everybody knows, good company, higher price. So we have to think, okay, what's a fair price for this company? What's a, a price that we're willing to pay for this company? And But we, can, we know that the company will grow over time. So we want companies that are high quality. Now let's move into the balance sheet. So what's the balance sheet that we can get comfortable with? What's a strong balance sheet? Well, net cash, generally speaking, is a strong balance sheet. So we want to make sure that we have a clean balance sheet from the perspective of an equity investor. If you followed uh, you know, the capital structure at all, you would know that equity sits at the bottom of the capital stack. So if there's a lot of debt in front of us, if the company gets in trouble with paying its debt, servicing its debt, we're going to be last in line. And sometimes, and many, let's say most times, if there's a bankruptcy, a liquidation, uh, even a reorganization, equity is going to get wiped out. So we need to make sure that we're comfortable with the balance sheet, meaning that we, we understand the risk. So we're really talking about what's the risk to the equity? 
How do you take the risk out of the equity? For the most part, you get rid of everything in front of it. So if there's no debt in front of it, or if there is debt, but there's a huge net cash position on the balance sheet, for example, we mentioned Apple a little bit earlier, that's going to be uh, something that helps us sleep really well at night. So if there's $100 billion plus uh, on the balance sheet, you know, we all sleep well at night. But in general, this is one of the more, you know, uh, straightforward pieces of our investment institute framework it's really just making sure that we take the risk out by understanding the balance sheet so some companies are going to have debt we just need to understand what is that debt is it a net cash position is the debt serviceable uh, without really an issue and one ratio that we want to look to there is the interest coverage ratio so that's really just ebit over interest so earnings before interest and tax over the interest payment that's how many times we can cover that interest payment with EBIT. So the higher the number, the better. And really, if we have net cash, we feel even better about the situation. So we just want to de-risk that as much as we can. And we want to make sure that the company uh, is a lot less risky for the equity holder, which in this case is us. For the GW Investment Institute, we, we hold listed equities. And so we're not holding debt of any company. So while we need to understand what that is, that's not what we're buying. We're buying the equity piece. And so we want to make sure that we de-risk it as much as possible. So we really need to understand the balance sheet. So that's why it's a separate component. So remember, now in summary, business, management, price valuation, and balance sheet. This is the GW Investment Institute framework. Our students have been using this for 17 years and have done a really good job with it. And we train a new set of analysts every semester. So we have 15 to new analysts in each class to run one of our four funds every semester. Uh, and this has worked. And one of the reasons we, we think uh, it works is because it's also worked at a larger scale uh, with Mr. Buffett. So really, it, it works anywhere. And it's simple and it's straightforward. Uh, and you can teach it to people and you can learn fairly quickly. Obviously, like anything else in the investment business, it takes a long time to get really good, right? So to, be, to get market returns, as, as mentioned, uh, in other places, really easy. How do you do it? You buy an index fund, it's super cheap, and you're going to get the market returns. To beat the index over time is extraordinarily difficult, but you need to be disciplined. You need to have a process. So this is the process that we created for the GW Investment Institute Student Investment Funds. Uh, you're happy to, to review it and think about it for yourself, but we think it's a powerful framework. It's really simplistic in some ways, but very difficult to implement in other ways because you need to really think about each component, and each component has its complexities. Again, the balance sheet might be one of the more straightforward pieces, uh, but you want to make sure that you understand that. Understanding the business can be more challenging, and understanding the management sometimes can be very difficult because there's a lot of subjective pieces that go into that management section. So you, And we'll talk about that when we break down each of the components. And the price and the valuation is some part art, some part science. Understanding what is the right price to pay for a very high-quality business, as we mentioned, that we want to buy. We don't want to buy low-quality business at a discount. We want to buy high-quality businesses as cheap as we can. But again, typically, that's not the case. So we need to figure out what is a fair price for a great business. That wraps it up for today. So I just wanted to cover those two things, a little bit of the market news, the, the Investment Institute framework. And we're going to cover each of the components throughout the next several episodes. So stay tuned. Uh, welcome back, everyone. We took a, a bit of a break for the summer, so I'm excited to be back. Look forward to hearing from all of you uh, throughout this academic year. Uh, please send comments in, send questions in. Thanks, everyone. Have a great evening and see you in episode four.